Good morning. I'm Pastor John Powell from Parkview Presbyterian Church in Oak Park, Illinois. And this is the 31st of May, 2020. It is, in fact, what we know as Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit to Christians, as recorded in the book of Acts of the Apostles. We have been sheltering in place. We've been in quarantine now for several months, and we're not able to meet together as God's people, and I miss a good, healthy hug and a hearty greeting. But today is a special day to consider what it means that even though we are distant and set apart and far apart, that we are still united by the Spirit of God. The Bible in the very first words talks about how the Spirit of God brooded over the face of, of the earth, moving to and fro over the chaos like a great eagle. It closes at the very end of the book of Revelation how the Spirit and the bride say, Come. It is a book which continues to wrap up this amazing story of how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the, that the world through him might be saved. But men loved the darkness because their deeds were evil. And even through over 100,000 deaths because of COVID-19 and a couple million people in our country about who have had the disease, and now the, the ugly and terrible things going on in Minneapolis and the riots across America because one man put his knee into the neck of it ended up, ends up being the very instrument of death. And it is a very tumultuous time. And so as we Christians consider what it means that today is Pentecost, we do so mindful, mindful of how the, the, the scriptures talk about the life and death and prophecy of Jesus and his resurrection and the amazing discovery of the disciples, the Great Commission to go into all the world with all authority, with all of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and it reminds us about how the Spirit has been active in God's people through the prophets, through the great displays of God's power and presence. But it would come and go. It never was for sure. Jesus, when he's baptized as a dove, the Spirit comes. This is my beloved Son. So when Jesus dies and is risen on Easter, on, in the setting of Passover and the, the amazing journey, he appears to the disciples over 40 days, according to the book of, of Acts, in the end of the Gospels. For 40 days, he is appearing to them in various settings, breakfast on the beach and the walk to Emmaus. And then uh, at the very first chapter of the book of Acts, he ascends into heaven, as we declare in the Apostles' Creed. And then he tells them to stay in an upper room until he sends the Holy Spirit. Chapter 1, Jesus goes up. Chapter 2, the Spirit comes down. Chapter 3, after Pentecost, the church goes out. And these Fickle and fearing disciples are suddenly bold and brave and full of an amazing grace. And 3,000 respond to Peter's sermon there on Pentecost and are baptized. And uh, next week, 5,000, and the number just keeps expanding and exploding through the pages of the book of Acts. Peter and John go up north to the Samaritan region and there's, there's Cornelius and the Roman centurion who comes to the coast and 
as Peter is preaching, the Holy Spirit comes down upon Cornelius and those Gentiles, and so they are baptized, and it just goes on and on and on. It's an amazing thing. Christ in you, the hope of glory, the Apostle Paul says there in Colossians. Ephesians, the Christ dwelling in the inner person, the Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Christ in you, the Holy Spirit in you. And then we see in the pages of the New Testament the gifts of the Holy Spirit to preach and teach and to be generous and to lead and to serve and to help. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then in Galatians chapter 5.22, the Apostle Paul talks about the, the fruit of the Spirit dwelling in believers. Love and joy and peace and patience, and kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control, the more the Spirit lives in us, the more we become like Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that's not just for individuals, because often the, the verb is plural. The subject is you all. When I was in Texas, I learned about all y'all, the plural of y'all. All y'all, everyone who is in Christ can claim and celebrate the baptism and presence of the Holy Spirit within us who draws us to himself and draws us to one another. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because Christ in me is my hope of glory, the spirit of Jesus. And there are a lot of us who are a bit, a bit confused about the Holy Spirit. Even though we have all sorts of studies about the, the, the Holy Spirit, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the, the amazing eternal fellowship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Christian theology tries to describe that triunity. But there's nothing like in the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul describes the Holy Spirit in the context of the other persons of the Trinity. And I have here Romans, Chapter 8, these words. And he's setting out the difference between being set on the flesh, human nature apart from God, the sarks of us all, our weak human nature, our lower human nature, our animal human nature that does battle with our souls. And he says, at verse 9 of chapter 8, but you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God really dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although your bodies are, said, are dead because of sin, your spirits are alive because of righteousness, because we are in right relationships, right relationship to God in Christ through the Holy Spirit. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life, not just bios, not just biology, not just vegetable life or animal life, but Zoe, eternal life, God's life, life of a different character and abundance. John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Did you know you can have life while you are in quarantine, while you are sheltering in place? 
that you don't have to go out and riot because of the injustices all around you, which continue day and night, sadly, with great grief and torment, but we can have life in Christ that doesn't do damage to ourselves or our neighbors who own a business and have struggled to have a business. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit which dwells in you. Look at all of the different ways that the Apostle Paul describes the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, Christ is in you, the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, his Spirit which dwells in you. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received the spirit of sonship. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the Spirit himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we also may be glorified in him. Beloved friends, let us seize the day, this day, Pentecost, 50 days after Passover, to celebrate with the early church what it meant to have Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's pray. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's name, amen. May the grace, mercy, and peace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide with us all now and forevermore.